Thank you for joining me today. We're going to be looking actually at uh, kind of a follow-up to a previous blog I've done in relation to the object variable. Um, here at Pragmaticers, we have a task factory. So specifically, we're going to be looking at a task, the secure FTP task. Uh, it's kind of been asked from us before. This task does have an action that allows you to get a list of files from a directory, and it populates this into an object variable. So the whole thing is, the, the common questions are, well, once I have my object variable, what do I do so I can see this information? So I'm going to just show you a small package I have set up, uh, kind of a couple different elements, and I'll explain why I have them, and you know maybe you can incorporate them into your environment, and maybe it'll help understand better on how to utilize this. Obviously, this is just one way to do this, um, but it gives a general idea. Uh, I, you can see the package layout here. I do have, there's no data flow task. This is all going to be done in the control flow. I do have an execute SQL task at the beginning if we decide to go with the execute SQL task option, which is I'm going to show you first. So basically, this is going to just truncate that table, uh, blank it out so that we can write everything fresh and new. I'm just going to open up the component itself so you can see. This is the task we're choosing. I've gone ahead and uh, when you click this, all you'll be presented with is a list of directories, because what we're doing is we're pointing to a directory, and it's going to bring us every file that exists in there. This does not include subdirectories. So we can see in my FTP site, I'm in the I'm about three levels deep, secure FTP, test, and then there are some files in here. We don't see them, because that's what this task is going to do for us. Um, so I'm just going to hit OK. I'm going to remove this, because we don't want that. That was an accident. And if we had multiple f uh, file types in here, we could go ahead and do some file filtering. Um, in this example, unfortunately, I only have two Word documents located in this subdirectory. But let's say if I had like a PNG file and I only wanted to get that, I could always just use the star logic that is nicely described here just at the bottom to incorporate that. So this would go through that directory and only bring in files that end in this extension. So just something else to look at. But in this case, I only have two Word documents, so I'm going to bring those down. Uh, you can see I've uh, assigned the object variable that I've created, and that is that for this uh, this component. Um, I'll include these scripts uh, in the in the blog itself, but you'll see I've created a small script task here. Um, right now, the object variable is still in its raw form, if that's a decent way to ex describe it, um, in a sense of it's collected all this information and it's stored in a binary sense. So even though it, we know we put string characters in there, it, doesn't read like that. We need the for each loop to parse that out, and then we can do something with that information because we're going to parse it out and map it to other user defined variables of different data types string, int, whatever it might be. Um, so in this example, I actually added something prior to that that this script. It can't read exactly the file names, but it, what this does is it allows you to actually see how many file items, how many rows exist in that array list. Um, it's loading up real quick here. I'm just going to show you real fast. Here's a script. It's uh, very simple. I will go ahead, like I said, and I'll add this in the um, in the blog itself so you can list it, but simply I'm just looking at the value of um, this variable, object files, and I'm just using a message box to give a file count of how many rows in that array list. So I'll put that out there. Um, like I said, it's a small item, it's more for like developer purposes, like while I'm in Visual Studios, I can just, boom, it pops up, tells me how many files are there, and I'm like, yay, that's good. So that's what that's going to accomplish, but the main item here is the for each loop container. We're going to see I have two items within the for each loop. These are two different ways that you can view these items. I'm actually going to disable this one first, and I'm going to enable the script test since we've already looked at one. This is using the same concept of producing a message box. You could use a script task and, and basically do a for each loop within there. I prefer to do items with the graph, you know, the, the GUI and using the actual components. But this script task within the for each loop, simply it's going to do is look at a, um, a user defined variable. We can see it's here, the file name. This is what's being used in this for each loop. So we're seeing, I'm pointing to my object variable. This is what it's going to loop through, and it's going to map the values of that array list to the string value. Since the object variable really only has the one column, it's simply just going to populate the file name. I'm just mapping it once, so as it parses through those rows, it's going to put that in this string variable. 
and then here I define the string variable and all I'm going to do is the same concept as far as use a message box to display the value of this uh, in string the value of the variable in, in that iteration so right here just going to show this real quick very simple so like I said message box showing the value in string format of this variable because it's a string va variable and that is it um, so every iteration in this instance there's only going to be two since there's only two files it's a little message box that's going to give me the name of the file which is uh, you know if we're just developing we don't need to write it anywhere could be useful so let me close out of this I'm going to execute so you can see exactly what I'm talking about alright we're acquiring the list of files from the directory and here's the pop-up it actually came up like I said it's simply telling me how many rows in that array list two that's correct now it's going through the loop so the first message box pop-up here's my first file when I hit OK just gonna populate the next message box beautiful so like I said more developer you know so you can visualize this if you don't need to write anything but a lot of times you will want to write these items to a table per se so everything's gonna remain the same you know we we have a uh, the param the mapping set here so we still know we have a string variable ready to use so what's happening here in this execute sql task is i'm just indicating a table we can see it's just a simple insert statement i'm dictating the columns in the table so i have two columns right now just the name and a time added and the values are going to be inserted let's well, going to be a parameter parameter one and then the second one the time added is going to be populated by the get date so let's go ahead here what is my parameter that's going to be defined here it is ordinal so if I had three columns and I was saying question mark question mark get date I would need to make sure I keep it nice and organized here so parameter 0 1 2 3 4 like I said it's ordinal so right here this is going to define that question mark that parameter and what we're going to notice is execute this we're going to get that little message box pop up. I'm just going to OK through it here. It still says 2. And we see it's check marked and it's good. If I were to go ahead and open up SQL Server Management Studios here, we're going to take a gander at this array list table. All right. And here we look just like we saw in the message box but now it's in SQL so we can do a little more if we like you can maybe follow up with a little more uh, uh, transformation logic if you and if a file that you expect is here then you can go ahead and maybe utilize that populate that into a variable and then use a download file from server option um, basically once it's here and it's in SQL sky's the limit you know it's, it's information that can be readily used to populate a variable be used once again in this ETL process um, so I said uh, just a simple explanation on how to use this specific action for this specific component with Task Factory, one of the many great components we have available. Um, I do have uh, another blog on this website specifically talking about the object variable. You can see how to use it outside of Task Factory. Um, but just a couple things. And like I said, uh, you'll see these if these script tasks interest you. They are all done in C Sharp. I will uh, post that on the blog as well. Thank you.